you could tell when a project is, there's a personal connection. You know that there's deeper meaning to it. This is definitely one of those projects that's been a dream. From the pioneers to the current models that are working, sharing this space together, celebrating each other, loving each other, this has never happened before. That room is just gonna be so filled with love. Pioneers, Lauren, Crimsonia, and Tracy. For the longest time, you thought that they were just going through that process all by themselves. Girl, I can't believe I'm meeting you. Let me get my camera. <laughs> I first got started in modeling when some friends of mine thought that I was pretty enough to be a model, and they started training me, and that's how it all started. They said I should be a model, I said, okay. <laughs> I started dressing like a girl when I was very young. And I was very blessed because my parents allowed me to do that. One of my friends started working in a modeling agency and he said, you know, you really have a great look. He said, why don't you come and, and test out? And this was before my surgery. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that sounds, you know, I always wanted to do that. Then I went in and I, they signed me. He wasn't so sure if I was transgender or not. So he goes, oh, can you stretch out your neck? I want to see how long your neck is. He wanted to see if I had an yes. Adam's apple. Do you know what I did? <clears throat> I swallowed and I kept my Adam's apple in. Like, and I'm like, I can't breathe now because I just like <laughs> let it. <laughs> my first job as a model was in Honolulu, Hawaii, doing postcards and calendars, topless. From there on, I moved to Dusseldorf, Germany, where I was discovered. I was the first woman from Guam that ever modeled the runways of Europe. Because for an Asian, you have such big feet. But you're quite special, you know? <laughs> and I was kind of nervous because I thought he was going to kick me out of the show. Yeah. But he did it because I already signed that contract. Mine said Vogue model was a man. Mm -hmm. And somebody had sold a picture of me when I was 60. It was horrible. I was just, OK, I'll just move on. Right. Because I felt like I went to different cities all over Europe, and just like I felt like my story, although it came out, it was the next week it'd be at the bottom of a birdcage mm -hmm. because we didn't have the internet. Yes, I got outed by my own people, my own race, and outed by the gay community. Cool. Very, very painful. That's what happened. To yes, me. Yeah, people came in while I was in front of the camera, and that side of the room instantly felt negative. And then that person called the editor over to to them. They had a conversation. She came back and said, so that's, a wrap. that's a wrap. Yeah. And we weren't finished. I you know, was born and raised in the Philippines, and I moved to the United States with a dream of wanting to be a model. At the time, there was not an out trans-identified fashion model. For the longest time, I was feeling like so afraid and full of shame about who I am. And after almost close to a decade of that journey, I was so ready at that moment to tell my story. And the moment I did that, there was a sense of like, I want to do everything. Hi. Oh my god, Hi. let me give you a hug. How are you? I'm, I'm Rain, by the way. When I was like 15 years old, when I was like introduced into the ballroom scene, they would show me videos and I would like see how kind the of way you would sell your face and it would be like a photo shoot. Like every time. Because that's all I knew. Exactly. It was just like taking your time and I was just like, this is what it's about. Because growing up, I'm pretty sure you know, like finding role models, it's so like hard. Yeah. And to like really like see someone that is like really living what you want to like have and live and like yearn for and really that that's like, this it's is like what I made for. It's yeah. possible. We want to introduce these amazing trans women to the world, to take pop culture icons and reference that they're so familiar with, and then understand this woman that's inside of them. We're paying homage to a lot of iconic women who have really messed with society's heads, and I think that basically 
We have, this whole trans revolution has messed with society's heads and I think that that's perfect. What do all these women have in common? And it's like, they were disruptors from Beyonce to yes. Cleopatra. Yes. Beyonce, she's all about girl power. She's all about really taking what we deserve and having the courage to just really, just be what we are. and. That's what I'm all about. Lil' Kim is such a like revolutionary, radical, black, queer woman. It meant a lot to be portraying her. I could have never imagined starting modeling that this is where I would be with these women that literally have shaped history for me and have paved the way for me to be able to do what I'm doing. Amazing. There isn't one trans. There no. isn't one face to trans. There's a gray If you spectrum. really think about it, we share this uh, inner voice, I feel. That's what experience. I'm saying, yep. That's you know, like growing up, you know you're different. You know you have that inner dialogue that's yes. like different from other people. Mm -hmm. And some people are more have more courage to like talk about it. Like I wish I would have gone back and like been proud to be who I was right. in high school. It's hard it's, though. It's so hard. It can be really hard. It's very hard because we're, we don't want to be like, made fun of or we don't want to be looked at as like da 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 but it's just like fuck that right. at the end of the day it's just like my purpose and my being is so important right now in this yeah. moment when we're a public figure when you're out there you know we every day we're choosing to do it in a way you're kind of a warrior you know i had to go to a casting call for calvin klein and they said you're here on the wrong day so i came back the next day and I was at a men's casting call. Turned out um, they had mistaken me as a male. And then on the day of the show, they handed me like a pair of underwear. I was like, I'm waiting for my outfit. And they're like, that's it. And I realized I was in a men's underwear show. During the run through, I waited in the dressing room until the last minute when I burst out in just underwear and nothing else. My tits, double Ds are flopping down the runway like this. And the casting director's like, no. A lot of people assume that I'm trans and I'm not. Um, aesthetically though, I'm not the typical face that you would see around. And I experience a lot of transphobia because people have an idea of what trans should look like. They believe that it's some person caught in the middle who will never pass. And I've never passed. Wonder Woman. Are you ready to go? said about me that I'm too like cis normative. Sure. And I'm like, what's what? wrong with that? It's just something that you have to acknowledge when yeah. there's trans women out there who are getting hurt because they're not cis passing. You know what I mean? I'm having facial feminization to become more cis passing for myself, to be more right. comfortable with myself. Yeah. After you do that mm -hmm. and after you pass, there's a whole nother It's a whole nother world. Oh, of course. like this. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Keep one leg straight. I haven't been this comfortable on a set probably ever. I have been obsessed with fashion for like a decade and I used to want to be a stylist and I wanted to be like a fashion editor. The industry is sort of like a different thing. Like I have like, I enjoy getting my hair and makeup done and like when people call me cute and shit and like I love all the like the opportunities that I've been able to have, but like the behind the scenes industry stuff is a lot more messy than I, it's like, it's very, so over, true. It's very overwhelming sometimes. Like, it's so true. Like when people see like a, like a photo on social media and it's glamorous, it's like, you don't know all the shit that happened that like happened to get there. Day. I've been on lots of sets with, with like trans people who like got misgendered on set and stuff like Same. that. And like, and, it, and it's difficult because I'm so happy for so many of the amazing things that I've done. But I can probably say like, there's like eight out of, like 80% of the things I've done, I can remember something terrible that happened on set. It's about making us more human to the world because yeah. right now we're not human to them. We're like mutants that they don't really want to accept because we challenge them. Walking down the block, us being on the train, these are all actions that are radical and that are making us more human to people. I've lost a lot of friends, and it's really sad that they're not here today to, to witness. witness this whole... Yes, we are blessed. I 
could not ask for a better reception from an industry that have treated me well to allow me to be myself, to recognize the talents that I could offer in this industry where I could create something from the perspective of a trans person. Having this moment today, it's so important. It's bringing the pioneers and like the new fresh models together, you know, to see where we've come and where we're going. It's truly, truly magical and I'm so proud to be a part of it. If an opportunity presents itself before you, walk through the door because you have absolutely nothing to lose and possibly a contract to sign. Being here today has just been a phenomenal experience. To be able to express ourselves and be who we are in the fashion industry as well as in our private lives. There's so many beautiful women out there. I think we're all role models for each other. Yay!